Good morning, uh, my name is Brian Whitaker. I'm with ID Additives, and today I'm gonna show you um, our Eco Pro 360 solution and how to dip parts, um, as well as how to recapture the material when you do dip, as one of the highlights of this product is that you can continue to reuse it as long as you properly filter it. Um, so with that, we are going to take our cart. Put in our supply line. I've just cut open a five gallon, five gallon excuse me, uh, jerry can. You can dip uh, however you'd like. You dip, I dip, we dip, all that fun stuff um, in whatever container that you have. The important thing is that when we're done with this process, like I said, that you are able to filter it out and continue reusing it. Um, if you were to leave any rust particulates behind in the solution, um, the chemical is going to continue working at it um, to break down any of those particulates, uh, rendering the chemical useless over time. So that should be good for our current application. I've got a couple of uh, inserts that I'll be dipping. So put that right back there for now. Here's the die. You can see that it's quite rusted. I'm going to dip that in there. We're going to give it a few minutes here. Um, I always recommend starting off with about five minutes of dip time. Um, you'll find that certain grades of steel, if you leave it in for long durations, um, will tend to dent the steel, like your H13s, if you leave in, I'd say for a half hour or so, um, it'll darken the, uh, the steel just a little bit. Um, don't worry if that does happen, it's simply reversed. You can either reapply the Eco Pro 360 to get that coating off, um, or the, this chemical breaks down with water, so you can use a warm, damp cloth um, to remove that, that film. That's just a reminder that you've left it in too long. Another application, if you brush it on, if you wanna come over here, um, that you've left some material on too long if you're applying versus dipping, is it creates this chalk white residue, if you will. That's also a sign that you've left the material on too long. Again, you can reapply the EcoPro 360, or this will break down with water. Um, in this case, it's even coming off with just my fingers, if you can see that. So I'll be cleaning up the rest of this tool a little bit later today. And we're back. It's been five or six minutes or so. Um, so I'm gonna pull this out because uh, that's the allotted test period that I usually tell people to try. You can see some of the rust has started to come off, others not so much. Um, but what I do is I, I test it with a Scotch-Brite here just to see how much I can get off uh, and determine if I need to lengthen my time dipped any further. Um, but by doing this, I'm allowing all the material to drop back in. That way I can filter it out and keep reusing this versus some applications of just spraying it on or brushing it on and you're not able to recapture it. We want all of our users to be able to get the most out of this product and recapturing it is definitely the way to do that. Now there are going to be some spots here uh, where I see some underlying, underlying staining, excuse me, and that's okay. I'll clean those up individually. You can kind of see how the rust is on top of the, the chemical. Eventually that will settle to the bottom. That's what we're going to filter out towards the end of this video. I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit more. You'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. I do recommend that you do wear gloves. This product is non-hazardous, non-toxic. It is does have a level one eye irritant and skin irritant on it. Um, if you get it into a cut, which I've discovered that I have, um, it's about half the tingling sensation is mineral spirits. So nothing too bothersome. Let's go ahead and dry this off. I prefer to dry this off for the video demonstration, just for not making too much noise, but you can take an air hose and blow it dry back into it. So you can see here, I do have some areas with a little bit of underlying rust. 
um, that can use, that could benefit from staying in the bath just a little bit longer. Let's see how the back side looks. I'll just clean that up a little bit. But some of the heavier areas you'll notice, I can either continue to dip for a little bit longer, I can choose to work with the Scotch-Brite to speed up the process. That area might benefit from a bath for about another five minutes or so. So that's how you dip. To finish up the process, I'm gonna show you now uh, best practices for filtering this out. We're now gonna take our supply. and put it into our dip tank. So with this, this is our supply line, this is our return. I've got 200 series fittings on here, uh, simply because this is the, the most common connection that I have when hooking up to a mold. I've just adapted a couple female fittings here. Male fittings, excuse me. That way I can bypass, typically this is how you hook up into a mold entry and exit side, um, but in order to keep everything flowing through here, and I'll actually ask you, Carolyn, to come around here so you can see this being filtered properly. Put my return. So with that, Again, I've got, if you want to look up here, got my supply line back in my dip tank. This is going to return, go through my filter, and then my supply line, or my return line, excuse me, after filtered out will be going back into my reservoir. And if you want to look back over here, tilting it up just to get as much as I can out of this. I expect to see some of the rust particulates near the bottom. We want to get as much as we can. Notice my pump has shut off simply because we've killed the supply. So in order to get everything else back through here, I'm going to swap over to my blowout side, switch my check valve. And blow the remainder of the chemical through my filter. And you'll notice that I'm draining the chemical through the filter. And back into my supply reservoir. So for those of you that buy a cart to flush out your cooling passages or your heat exchangers in your tool rooms, like I'd really like to be able to dip some of my parts, that's exactly how you do it. <clears throat> I have about four ounces of material in here still left. You can do one of two things. <clears throat> you can strain it back out into here. Um, or you can simply dump it back into your reservoir and then if you've got a similar connection to what I have you can just circulate that that chemical that's what I do after some of my demonstrations when I'm on site is I'll dump everything back in and then I'll filter it through um, and let it run for maybe 20-25 minutes um, that way I, I ensure that uh, all of my chemical is properly filtered and uh, can be used uh, continuously